It is. Come out of recess. Okay. We don't need a motion. Okay. So we just uh, start with the schedule. The first three names there are here. We have several people that are that have told us uh, here just recently that they're not going to be here. We still have to take action on them. Uh, but the first three are here. And we can start with uh, Hartman. Judy Hartman. Will that be Trevor and Miss Judy? Miss Judy, we'll have uh, Trevor speak first, and then we'll have you um, tell us um, what you're thinking about your property and and your information too, ma'am. Okay, Trevor. All right, my name is Trevor Abernathy, an appraiser with Equalization Office here. And uh, the properties that are in question with this appeal, uh, there's three of them. It's tax ID 3209, 68204, and 68205. And Judy, I've given you uh, the information that I've given the board as well. Um, so, so if we refer to that, you have it as well. Um, I would recommend acting on each one individually just so there's no confusion uh if it comes down to talking about all of them that, that's okay but uh we need to act on each one individually here so that that worked uh, good so Trevor, thank you what these these were appealed last year um one thing that occurred uh, last year when we were doing a reappraisal was that uh, 68204 and 68205 were um split into two different tax ids because they were previously incorrectly assessed as one lot. Um, so that's just kind of a, a background of, of what's happening here. Uh, but if we could start with 3209, this is a bare piece of land. Um, these are all located at the top of Radar Hill Road and uh, 3209 actually has access off of Aberdeen Court. Um, this is 10.04 acres and all three of these uh, here are within the Box Elder city limits. They have city water to the lot line. If you look at that handout that I gave you there, that's the uh, map from the city of Box Elder showing that the main, the water mains are right up uh, on morning view to all three of these lots. And I checked with the city of Box Elder, it's about a $750 tap fee to tap into city water. Um, then obviously you'd have to have some, some trenching costs and everything there as well, but, but they do have access to city water. Um, and this, property was appealed to the local board this year. They changed the original assessed value that we had of 79,100 down to 60,100. And I'd like to know what we brought it back because this de-equalizes it from the neighborhood. Uh, that 60,100 is about what a two acre parcel in this neighborhood is valued at. Uh, so the 10 acre parcels, all the other 10 acre parcels in this neighborhood are around that 79,100. Um, so I'd like to first show you some of the recent sales that were in this neighborhood. Um, we don't have uh, an exactly recent sale for these 10 acre parcels. Uh, so I have some abstracted values for that that I'll go into in a moment. But here's some of the sales that we do have. Um, we have uh, tax ID 43082, which is this one here on, on the map. Um, it did not have this house on it. That's been built since. But it sold in 2014 for 72500 And then again the next year for 80000 And this is a two-acre lot. And we have this parcel here. It has since been split since it, since it was purchased. But it sold as one piece 2.76 acres in 2014 for 90000 this parcel here off of Anderson Road, uh, this is 2.77 acres. This sold in 18 for $80,000. I'd like to note that there are some differences uh, with uh, services on these lots. Um, some of them have city water. One of them has city water and septic. However, the one that has neither one of those things sold for the most at $90,000. So we don't see a negative influence for not having access to the city <laughs> utilities. The most recent 10 acre sale that was bare land that sold was back in 2004 in this neighborhood. So it's, it's a much older sale, but even back in 2004, this bare piece right here, this 10 acre piece that my mouse is over, sold for $66,000 in 2004. Uh, obviously, the, it's 15 years old. The market's changed a lot, uh, which is why I relied a lot on, on some abstracted values for land, land values. So if you look at the handout that I have with the map with all the arrows, this one here, if you have that. Those are all the sales that I use to help value the subject property. So all of these sales, um, there's nine sales, and they're, they're from 2013 to current. 
and they have ranges from 44,200 on the low side to 130,000 uh, indicated value on the high side. Now, when working with these, I used the median value just because I didn't want to be influenced by the low and high sales. Uh, the median value for all of these indicated land value is 79,300 for a 10 acre piece. And what this is, again, just to explain abstraction, is it's an improved parcel that has sold and we remove the value of all the improvements from that sale, and that's what the indicated land value is uh, from that. So with, with all of that information and the, the two to three acre pieces selling for eighty to $90,000, uh, it's not unreasonable to have 10 acres at 79,100. Uh, so in, in this case, with, with that parcel, that's my recommendation is to reinstate the original assessment of 79,100. Ms. Judy. Well, this property has gone up 21.51% a change from last year. I mean, that's an awful lot for just 10 acres of land. And a lot of these sales he's looking at, these are in developments that, uh, housing developments that they take care of, you know, their roads and all that kind of stuff. This property, it's on a gravel, well, I don't even know if it's gravel road. I don't think the, excuse me, I have a cold. It's gumbo, it's undeveloped. Um, as far as water, um, there's a Morning View associate that we have water um, with our development, so they would also have to go through that. And I would think you'd have to get it in writing from Box Elder that they're actually gonna allow water there because of the well problems that they've had. They're not doing a lot of uh, letting people tap into the water. Um, I don't know, it's, it's unimproved, it's way at the very end of the road. Um, on that Aberdeen Drive, it's partially, um, uh, most of it is all gravel or rutted, it's not a very good road. I don't think the bus, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think the bus goes down there, so they would have to go one or two miles up to the place where it's paved at if they have kids that they would have to go. Uh, most of the people back there have cisterns that they haul their own water. I, I don't know. I just I don't think this property is worth seventy nine thousand. A lot of the the ones that he's talking about aren't even well. They're probably a mile or two down the road. They're not even in this development of ours. Anything I don't know. else, Miss Harvey? In 2016, my property taxes assessed were at 56,000. Now in 2019, they've gone up to $79,100. That's, that's a big jump in property taxes there. I mean, last year I paid $1,000 and $57,057 just for this 10 acres of, of land that I don't have anything on it that I... Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Is there a question from the board? Madam Chair. Connect. One thing I didn't hear was zoning. Are these all zoned the same? Um, I could look at the zoning. I don't have the z zoning right up here, so let me let me pull that here. Actually, it's probably <coughs> going to be in. Uh, I assume there's zoning in Box Elder. I don't know if we have it on Rapid Map okay. though. Is the problem? I just want to make sure that we're everything's that the ones that we're using from comparables that they're zoned. The same as the subject as, property. Ms. Hartman, do you know what your zone or your limited egg? Uh, no, it's just um, owner-occupied. No. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. I, I can't go out <coughs> unless you have 40 acres. So. General egg, I think. So uh, most of these are zoned general in the area. I don't have, um, on, on Rapid Map, unfortunately, it doesn't show the exact zoning in the city limits of, of uh, Box Elder there. General so egg. I... Um, I, I do want to note, though, that uh, she had mentioned that it was uh, that my comparables were in subdivisions. That uh, that's not correct as far as being in these uh, right here. Th those subdivisions. These are all along Radar Hill Road um, and Hidden uh, the Hidden Springs Road. Hidden Springs Road is also a gravel road as well. Um, and one of the comparables that I have is is Caddy Corner to the property, and that indicated an eighty-one thousand uh, dollar value on it. So I don't think that that cul-de-sac of Aberdeen Court has a negative impact on value. Did that have improvements on it? Yes, it did. 
Yeah, I see. I don't have any improvements on mine at all. Okay. Yeah, there is access to city water there as well, which is a, which is a. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. So. Uh, okay, Judy was saying that her access was gumbo, or are, are some of these accessed off of gravel or paved streets? This this Aberdeen Court right here is is basically a dirt road um, that comes off of that. So all all of these parcels that are in here. Uh, which are all all valued uh, the same as as this one here. They're all all accessed off that dirt road. Um, dirt, or, dirt or gravel? I would say dirt. Okay. Yeah. Mark, did you have a question? Well, I I just uh, I think what we did was we sort of did her a disservice last year by giving her a reduction, yeah. and now you're getting shocked by this big jump when the actual value would have been correct last year in the first place. And uh, I know 000. of I know of properties up there uh, that ha that are listed currently um, that are 13,000 an acre unimproved. And uh, so I don't think that this is an it is off as far as what you could turn around tomorrow and sell the piece of property for. Well, it would have been valued last year at 65,100. That's still a big jump up to 79,100. We jumped from we jumped to from 59 to 60,100. Is that what we did last year? That's what it was assessed at, but it was dropped down to 60,100, but the assessment came out at 65,100 if if they wouldn't have given me a Which, reduction, but still 79,000. What you're saying is from 65 to 79 is a, is a big jump. Still but a big jump. those pieces of property up there are becoming in high demand and they're selling very quickly. I, I don't see any, I mean, most of that is improved. There's nothing, there's no improvement to that land. But as Trevor said that you have access oh. to did you look at this? And this the water. Back they have access to it, yes. But they have power. to go on the, they'd have to right go on there that next to your road. They'd have to go on that dirt road. This is what I would do. Yeah, the high and low, and I'd look at the rest of them, and that's what they come out to. Trevor, the north side of 3209, what, sometimes I look at the, what, a, how, what a property abuts the neighborhood, you know, so if you're in a dense neighborhood, it's probably going to be more valuable to a developer, but when you get, I can't see what. Oh sure. What's, what's to the north of this? Is this uh, some ranch huts or something? Yeah, to the north here. Um, this is a larger parcel here. Then you get um, some more agricultural properties here, and there's a small subdivision uh, off of Moon Street and Sky Street here that are all uh, acre or less properties. And yeah, most of those are trailer houses. A lot of them are are manufactured houses. Sometimes there's a benefit to the seclusion, not having neighbors, too many neighbors. Yeah, and many of my abstracted land sales that I have here were, were mobile home uh, sales. So when you do your extraction process, how do you, how do you, uh, are the, you're basically trying to come up with what you believe is the contributory value of the modular or mobile, and Correct. then that the residual would be your land value? Yes, and, and with that, we use the, the values that we had in place as of the time of sale, um, and, and those are, are deemed accurate based on our reappraisals in, in the area, and that's what we use to, to um, subtract the improved value out. So. Thank you. Yep. Do we have a motion or a more discussion? <clears throat> I got one comment. Commissioner um, Lucre. Judy. <clears throat> I don't. I don't think there's one commissioner up here who doesn't feel uh, bad for you. But part of the problem that we have is, in the past, we we've given breaks and and given out the sympathy type of thing, and and now it comes back and it kind of bites the next year's uh, board of equalization. So what they're trying to do is make it fair and equal to everybody, to all the property owners out there, as as Mark was saying. Mm -hmm. And as Trevor said, you know, that's what, what it is out there. So if, if we give breaks, it, the following year it comes back. It just keeps getting further and further behind. I think we're, most of the constituents I've heard is they, they said we can handle the smaller increases as we go. And I know we get these some of these big jumps, but once we get back up to where we should be, 
uh, then it's not as severe. So I guess I, I kind of uh, agree with Trevor's assessment. I mean, he did a good job of looking around and 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 had several properties out there that he's that he went through. So, Thank you. but to me, the the assessment in 2016, you guys or equalization assessment was 56,000 in what two years it's jumped up twenty two thousand dollars yeah. I mean how can people afford to pay property taxes I understand thank you um, I'll make a motion to leave as is I'll second that one one thing there is is the local board had changed this to sixty thousand one hundred I'm recommending to read seventy nine one yep seven nine. yes sir okay. Is that what your motion was for? That's my second is for. Second, thank yeah. you. I do. I, you know, as I run the numbers, uh, and I've got confidence in in the uh, uh, equalization office on this too, uh, but I I don't see where it should be anything lower than what the seventy nine one is. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Next one. The next one here is 68205. Um, that's up here on, on the map as well. This this argument will be uh, pretty much the same as 3209. This is a bare piece of land, um, and it is uh, it was moved down uh, to 60,100 from the local board. I'm recommending to reinstate the original assessment of 78,400. Uh, the reason this is a slightly different value than 3209 is because the size is a little bit different. Instead of the 10.04, this is 9.51 acres. Um, again, this has access to city water, um, and uh, it uh, also has all, all the same sales that we just discussed that affect that value. Thank you. Ms. Hartman? Um, it also does um, have a dam on there that is kind of in the middle of the two properties of the... Um, 68205 and 68204, which is hard to, I don't know, when we bought it, it had the fence went through the um, part of the dam. So that's kind of hard to to sell when you've got, you have to share a dam. <laughs> Thank you. It also, a long time ago, had a trailer house on it, so it does have a septic tank somewhere in there in the property and I'm not sure where it's at. I don't know how I'd even find out. So that would be a, a point if you'd try to sell it, they'd have to find, or I would have to find where the septic tank is at and I don't know if they'd have to fill it in or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Um, board, discussion, motion. Madam Chair, I would uh, make a motion that uh, we insta reinstate the original assessment of 78.4 on the land. A motion, is there a second? Second. Second by LaCroix, <coughs> motion by Drews. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Madam Chair. Sir? If we, uh, if we did re go back to, uh, you know, the local board, we would essentially, would not, we wouldn't have uh, equalized assessed values then, would we? No. Because it looks to me like this is all pretty much based on all the assessed values are pretty much <clears throat> the same in this neighborhood. And, and that would be my concern is to get one down there and then somebody else can come in and say, well, <clears throat> if this is down, I want mine down, then we, we're in a bigger mess. Yes, Commissioner. Okay, we're on 68204. All right, uh, tax ID 68204 is the improved parcel in these. Uh, this is located right there on, on Morning View Drive as well, right next to the other two. And the local board did change this to 60,100 on the land and 137,400 on the improvements for a total of 197,500. I'm recommending to reinstate the original assessment of 79,000 on the land and 149,600 on the improvements for a total of 228,600. <coughs> Uh, Ms. Hartman, sorry, you done, Trevor? Well, I've I've got some comparables I, for the house if you'd like, but she <laughs> can go first as well. It's sorry. Either way works. So. Go ahead, Trevor. Okay. Sorry, I uh, thought you were done, sir. Not a problem. So this residence was built in 1987. Uh, it consists of 1,414 square feet over an unfinished basement. Uh, overall, the quality is a little below average due to the quality of all the components and the lack of windows on the rear of the house, and we are acknowledging that. 
there are three bedrooms and two full bathrooms. The interior is dated, but overall the house is in average condition, uh, showing some evidence of deferred maintenance and, and need to uh, repair and refinish some things, but overall is, is in uh, average condition. Uh, we've taken both the quality and the condition into account with this assessed value. So that, that's the back of the house there. Uh, and then if you want to show the front of the house, Anne. That's actually the view. Uh, there's, there's the front of the house there. So uh, this also has an outbuilding on the property. Uh, it's a two car detached garage that is 26 by 32. That's 832 square feet. It was built in 1977 and is low in quality, uh, has significant wear and deferred maintenance. It has a minimal value on it of $3,500 on this garage. So, um, and if you want to show a picture of that. That's the detached garage there. So, and then uh, the, the comps that I have, most of the sales are a little older year build than the subject. Uh, and uh, comp number two is, is much older than 1961, but we do make it, uh, adjustments for that. Uh, the best uh, comparable property that I have is, is comp number five. If you want to pull those up, Ann, uh, take a look at those. So again, the subject property is 1,414 square feet over uh, 1,320 square foot basement, and it sits on 10 acres. Uh, the best comparable I have is comp number five there. Uh, this sits on 11.19 acres. It was built two years later than the subject property. Same style of house, has 1,404 square feet, so 10 square foot difference, and has a smaller basement of 576 square feet. Um, it does have an attached garage instead of a detached garage. And this sold for 265000 in November of 16. Uh, this one is uh, located on Reservoir Road, so there is a small uh, adjustment for location involved with this one. Uh, the other comparables there, um, we've got uh, number one has 1,600 square feet and 728 square foot attached garage. This one is over on Anderson Road on a much smaller piece. It's 0.87 acres. And uh, the house is a little bit older, but has been updated a little bit more. And there is a shop building in the back, but this one sold for 305000 in 18. Um, on Crane Drive, this is the older uh, home. It's 1961. does not have a basement, but it's similar square footage at 1325 and has a detached garage of 432 square feet. This sold for 185017 um, And the one on Sky Street there is just kind of catty corner to the north of this property. Uh, it sold um, in 2017 for 204900 it's a 1974 with a 1,200 square feet and a 1,200 square foot basement. Um, with these comparable sales that I have here, uh, I believe it supports the value that we have on, on the residents. And again, I recommend to reinstate the assessed value of 79,000 on the land and 149,600 on the structures for a total of 228.6. Just one question, Trevor. Her sure. land value is 79,000. Is it because I didn't see it? And I'm not looking at the acreage. Yes, the, the first four are much smaller. They're not even, uh, well, one of them is an acre and the others are less than an acre. And in this, in this, this neighborhood. This is 10 acres? Yes, this is 10 acres. Okay, that's where I did it. Okay, sorry, I wasn't reading the. And, and that's why comp number five uh, is the best comparable property since it's 11.19 acres, very similar house. Sorry. It cost you. Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Brown. <laughs> Trevor, what's the uh, on the assessed value of the, uh, the original of two twenty eight six hundred? What do you get uh, per square foot then? Uh, one hundred sixty one dollars and sixty seven cents. And the number five, what did that sell for per square foot? You said that was the most comparable. Let's see. Uh, one eighty eight. Thank you. Hartman, did you want to speak on this, sir? Oh, ma'am. Well, it has a long driveway, which means if you'd buy it, you'd have to have a, 
probably a snow blower or you'd have to shovel a lot, which I've done over the years. Um, the metal garage has a dirt floor, so if we get a lot of water, there's water that runs through that. that. Um, the unfinished basement, uh, we had a house fire in 1986, so we built on top of the basement and we extended the basement a little bit, but where the two, um, uh, where they go together, it leaks in there. It's like about probably three feet above the, uh, the floor. I've, I've tried stopping it and, and uh, cementing it and stuff, but it still leaks. So that would be a concern, I'm sure, for a buyer if they tried to buy that. because And there are leaks like around some of the windows and stuff in the basement, probably because the fire weakened the basement a little bit. So um, Also, one of the outside faucets is hooked to a well, which doesn't work now, so they would have to re-plumb that. I don't, it's it you know it's over thirty years old so yes it needs a lot of improvements. Thank and you, Ms. Hartman. Commissioner uh, DeSanto. Trevor, were you aware of the leakage in the basement? Uh, when I I have been told of that, and when we were out there to inspect it, I did not notice a significant issue with that. That's smell. You could not didn't smell musty or it's mildewy. It's in the corner, so you probably didn't go back in the corner. It's way on the. You didn't I, go back down I didn't down. notice a, a significant musty odor, no. Because that that would be of significant concern. Because if if the uh, building inspector came, or a home inspector came out and did a home inspection and noticed that leakage, then it would make it very difficult to, for that house to qualify for a loan, unless they fix that problem. So that would be a. For me, that's a significant reason to, um, on the house anyway. I think the land is valued exactly where it should be, but. I do have a sump pump down there and that helps alleviate the water. But yeah, it's flooded that whole back section numerous times until I got the sump pump in. And also what they consider a porch is actually just, um, it's just the stairs that go from the outside down to that added section that we have for the basement. I don't know why it's considered a porch. It's just actually stairs that go down. I, I can address that, and if you want to pull the photo of the front of the home. So that addition that's right, right there behind the bush on the corner there, right. uh, the roof comes over it. It's got siding, uh, concrete foundation. It's attached to the living, and it's a stairwell that goes down. Um, in order to not call that living, uh, I called that an enclosed porch, which is uh, a cost that is less per square foot than actual living space. But it does still have a roof over it and exterior walls, siding, foundation, everything. So, so Judy, that's where the leak is at, too? Yep, it's on the that side of the house, way on the left side, as you're okay. looking at the picture. And, yeah, and Judy, you <laughs> occupy this home yourself? I do. Okay. Uh, and the well is not usable. Is that what I understood you say? So where do, where does your water come from now? Well, I have box elder water, but it's just the one, just the one outside. There's two faucets outside. One of them is hooked to the box elder water, and the other one is hooked to the well, which doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. So there's one that's that's usable. Yes. Trevor, what's the condition of the deck? Um, as far as my memory goes on that deck, it is warm. Um, the exterior, you're talking the exterior deck? Just um, <laughs> stability. The stability I didn't see an issue with, but it is worn and would need some attention. Okay. Not, not rotting, though. No. Not significantly, no. Cross connect. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. We, uh, I recommend and adjust the uh, 2019 assessed value of the land and the building at 214, 460. That would be giving the gross floor area above grade uh, $10 a square foot. And I would think that that would, that should uh, so be $14,140. Let's, let's have a motion, if that's your motion. Okay. And then a second, and then discussion. So the recommendation from Commissioner a second. Ross Connect is 214, 460. And the second by LaCroix. And now discussion, sir, follow up? That would uh, basically allocate around $15,000 to take care of any remediation in the 
wet areas and uh, repurpose the deck. Okay. Deb, did you get that? Oh, yeah. 14.5. 214.5, okay, with yeah. the motion? Okay. Around it. Yeah. Yes. I always forget that. Thank you, Deb. Any other discussion? Well, I tend to... Um, uh, I agree with Mark. I think the, I think the land uh, is probably appraised at appropriate. Um, the house probably needs some adjustment. I don't have a problem with that total number, but I presume that we uh, we need to have that separate uh, driver as to to land and guess the land break would, it out. The land would need to be seventy nine thousand. Yep. And then take the uh, the reduction off of the off the structure uh, off the improvement. Correct. Yes. Okay. And that's what the motion was. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Gary. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Thank you, Trevor. Next we have Dahlquist, Ronald. Uh, Dahlquist is here. Um, I don't think uh, they'll speak, but Melissa has a recommendation. Okay. But uh, I did want to mention the, uh, the rounding just so everybody here knows, our computer system rounds to the nearest 100. Uh, we, we're, uh, we're really good at what we do, but we're not good enough to go down to the dollar. So we round every number to the 100. So, so when you make a motion, keep that in mind. It makes it difficult uh, for the minutes. If it's a number like that, you know, we have to force it in somehow. Uh, rounding to 100 just makes it fit easier. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Ms. Melissa. Good morning. The property subject is located at 227 Ash Street in Box Elder, and the value I'm recommending is $3,100. That's $1,000 on the land and $2,100 on the buildings. Okay. That'd be my motion. Second or discussion? Second. Second by LaCroix, made by Hadcock. Any other discussion? Am I reading this right? It does. It was. They want the board wanted to reduce it to two thousand. Yes. Correct. From thirty thousand one hundred. Yes. I just wondered what the rationale was. Sure. So the this property is sort of unique. Um, the Ellsworth Development Authority purchased a perpetual restrictive use easement on the property. <coughs> um, so one of the restrictions being that the property is no longer allowed to be used as a residence. Um, it also is in the 100-year floodway. So after I spoke with the city of Box Elder, it appears that it would be extremely difficult to obtain a building permit. Um, it also is in the accident potential zone, and it's in the noise zone. So we're going down to 3,100. The structures are also in v pretty poor condition, too. So. Yes. I think that's a good recommendation. We're going down to what? 3,100. Uh, 30,100? Nope. Is it 30 or 3,000? 3, 3,100 is yes. my recommendation. Because of Correct. all the restrictions. The, the original assessed value was 30,100, but I'm recommending a value of 3,100. Oh, okay. Because of all this restrictions. It seems like I missed a zero maybe, but I didn't. <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I understand now. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Dahlquist, I'm sorry, I didn't ask you. <laughs> I thought you were pretty good with that. Okay, thank you, honey. Let's let's skip uh, Mountain View. Uh, Trent was expecting them to be here, but he, he wasn't sure. But how about we do Russell Jameson? Don has a recommendation for that, and, and then we'll skip to uh, Trent till uh, he'll speak briefly about Mountain View. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Don. You look wonderful this morning in your well, green and black. <laughs> Uh, Don Puckett, appraiser for Equalization Office. Good morning. Um, this is a parcel located in Box Elder, um, ID number 61807, taxpayer Jameson. I have a recommendation to restore the original assessed value. The local board did lower it, and I was able to talk to Mr. Jameson, and he understood that I was going to recommend our original value be reinstated, and he's fine with that. So for land value, 39800 Building value, 173200 for a total assessment of 213000 Two hundred thirteen thousand. Do we have a motion? My motion would be to accept nope. the appraiser's value. Motion by DeSanto. Is there a second? Assessor's value. I'm sorry. Second. Second by Lacroix. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's back up. Mountain View LLC. Uh, Trent has a recommendation on that one. He's uh, been talking to the property owner and even uh, confirmed the appointment today at 9 o'clock. Uh, the end of last week, uh, I, we don't know why he's not here. I, obviously, he decided not to come, but Trevor has a, Trent has a recommendation. Trent? Hi. Uh, my recommendation is going to be going back to our original assessed value at $13,140,000. $13,140,000? Mm hmm Any discussion? Just a quick question. Do you know what the uh, rationale of the local board was? I don't. Um, the the manager was on the local board. He stepped down to appeal his property. I, I don't know. He had the information I've gotten from him is that he feels he's making less money because the market is tougher with more apartments coming out. I've looked at his income information. I've got it here, um, but I'm seeing through all of his information that we're still low on the value. I'd make a motion that we accept the assessor's recommendation. Second. Motion by Drew, second by DeSanto. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Do we have anybody here from the next set that we can do? The, the next set, uh, the only one we have will be a phone interview. That's STAG 3. Okay. So can we do the recommendations? Yeah. On, and, and then we'll call on Chris and Chris's do. on the first three. Um, do we need to break for like an hour since uh, we're ahead of time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we should do this and then come back to the phone call. Okay, so uh, Don has a recommendation uh, for uh, Dan and Brenda Pettit. Uh, we just got an email this morning that says that they're not going to be here. So uh, we have uh, the next three. Um, we've had phone calls or emails that said they're not going to be here. That's why we're doing recommendations yes. board. So you know why we're moving forward onto the next step, if that's okay with this board. Yes, I just got one okay. question. Yes, sir. Uh, these, all these folks have had an opportunity to come in and view with an appraiser. and we, there's We've been had discussion. contact with all of them. Uh, occasionally there's somebody that, except for our mailing address, we don't have any contact information for, but, uh, by far most of them, uh, multiple contacts, uh, gone out and looked at the property, uh, traded emails. Uh, this one here, Don is, uh, this Pettit, uh, Don has sent a couple of emails and we just got an email this morning and said they're not going to come. Uh, the next, uh, the next one, Alfred and Paige Dial, uh, Chris has been working with them for quite a while, and he's got a recommendation, and they're happy with it. And after we printed the schedule, decided not to come. Yeah. Okay. And then the phone, maybe we could get them prepared to see if they want to, if that's okay, if they want to phone in early. Like, then we could take a break, like 10 o'clock. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd make a motion on the Pettit that we accept the uh, assessor's value. <laughs> I'll, I'll second by, that. By Drew's, <coughs> second, second by Ross Connect. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. How about Chris's? 38-9. <laughs> it was. Thirty-eight nine. It was. John, could you 30, tell us your recommendation? Thirty-eight nine, I think. Thirty-eight nine. Thirty-eight nine. Thirty-eight nine. Yep. Thirty-eight nine. Okay, Chris. Yours. We have thirty-eight nine five times. Going one. <laughs> <going two. laughs> All right, well, I have seven properties here. I'll just go in order here, okay. my recommendations, and act on, on them all, all as once. one since the owner is good with all the recommendations. We okay with all that? right. Yep. Okay. All right, for property uh, 17939, recommending land of. Sorry, Chris. Oh, sorry. Shan, can you see if we can get the person ready for the phone? Will do. Thank you, sir. All right, for 17939, recommending land value of, of oh, 35,000, structures of 135,500 for a total of 17,500. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, Chris, Deb's recording you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, for 18017, land of, of oh, 35,000, structures of 88,400 for a total of 123,400. All right, and uh, 18018, land at uh, 35,000, uh, structures 84,200, 
total 119,200. You going too fast, Deb? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if, yeah. <laughs> I say I do have them all broken down, Deb, if you need that. So, okay. So, thank you. So, all right. All right, then tax ID 50526, land of 35,000, structures 84,000, total 119,000. Tax ID 50527, land 35,000, structures 88,400, total 123,400. Bear with me for a second. Oh, sure. 50526. 50526 like was uh, 35,000, um, 84,000 on the structures for a total of 119. Okay, I'm, are you guys showing that on your paperwork? Because I'm showing 13600. Oh, I did? Oh, oops. <laughs> okay. What? What's that, Deb? On on five hundred five two six, I'm oh, showing total the assessed one? value of one thirty six hundred. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Thirty five thousand and ninety five thousand. Yep. Five hundred five two six. One thirty six hundred is what we have. We had a local board want to make a change. For dial has lots of. Property there. I didn't know you knew how Did you? What's that? Yeah. Wow. Shannon, where's the Thunderbird subdivision? What? Where is the Thunderbird subdivision? That's one of those. That's why I made that. North side of the interstate. Oh, Thunder for you? Thunderbird, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, just like behind yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So Did you get that all, corrected. All good. Yeah. Yeah. We got her. Good. All right. So, all right. Uh, so I'll be at tax ID five hundred five two seven. Uh, right. So thirty five thousand on the land, eighty four hundred on the structures for a total of one twenty three four hundred. Tax ID 50528. Hold on now. On 50527. 50527, yep. We, we are showing 135600. For my recommendation? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 35000 on the land, 100600 on the. Yeah, so this is before I actually got inside any of these. Oh, I see. So oh, we yeah. don't have the right numbers up here. Yeah, yeah see, I got, yeah, so these are all my recommendations because when I sent that out, I did not get inside of these. So I didn't know. I see. I well, so these are your adjusted numbers yes. from the, okay. Yeah, so, yeah cool. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that cool. threw me off big time. <clears throat> okay. So are they so are adjusted all these higher gonna, or lower? Yeah. Lower. Okay. So lower so after, lower after being inside of them. All of these are going to be lower? Yes, they, after getting inside them, yes, I need to make adjustments on all these. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, them. Chris. That's, so. That'll help. Okay. That'll help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh, all right. So You're then, doing good, Chris. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll go to tax ID 50528. Uh, land at 35,000. Structures 88,100. Total of 123,100. 88,000, you mean 100? Yes. Yes, 88,100. My bad. All right. And the last one, tax ID 50529. Land at thirty-five thousand. Structures at eighty-eight thousand four hundred. Total of one twenty-three four hundred. That is it. <laughs> hey, did anybody miss anything or? No, but some of these actually were lower than what the local board did. Yeah, actually, yeah. Right? See, after I got inside them, yeah, they needed some some adjustments. Does anybody have a motion or discussion? Move for approval. Moved by Lacroix. Chris's recommendation. Second. Second by Drews. Any discussion? You guys need a minute. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so Joan has the tax rep for STAG 3 on the phone. The same tax rep company uh, is representing Norwest Bank at 11 o'clock. She will have to hang up and dial another number to the same office. We could do both of these back-to-back. -back. Okay, that sound, is that okay with the board? Mm -hmm. Fine. Okay. Okay, so we will do stag three. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, do we have somebody on the phone? Should be Matt. 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 Matt
got something. Ma'am? Matt? 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 <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry. I can hear you guys. <laughs> You're not a ma'am? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not a ma'am. I'm just teasing. My name is Matt Selling. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Okay, Matt, uh, make sure you uh, speak into your phone uh, so we can hear you. And if you can't uh, hear somebody here mention that, uh, you've been working with uh, Richard Rick in our office, and he'll have to speak into the microphone, and then the board is listening. I think we'll start uh, with Richard. Good idea. Richard? Good morning, Madam Chair and, morning. and other commissioners. Um, there are two parcels to this property, <clears throat> 64554 and 52456. Uh, 52456 is just a, a bare lot with a parking on it and so forth. And Matt and I have talked about this. He, we have a value of 138900 on it, and we've agreed that that's fine. Uh, if that's okay, uh, we'll go with that one. Um, 52456? Oh, maybe it was. Five, two, four, five, six. <clears throat> maybe it's been processed already. Give us just a sec, R3. I think so, because I, yeah, I, I I've got 64554. 64554 is correct. Okay, so Matt, so that you're aware, uh, since uh, you were in, in agreement with the value on the one parcel, the board acted on that earlier with a bunch of other properties uh, the same way. So uh, we'll be just talking about the improved parcel here now. The 64554, six, okay. Matt. Okay, that's fine. R3? Yes, ma'am. What's that? Okay. All right. R3. <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, the subject property is the, uh, the old green tree property and, and so forth that you can see right there highlighted in the blue and, and so forth. It is now known as Stag 3 Rapid City LLC. Uh, um, it was green tree, then, then Conseco, and, and now Stag 3. Um, just to familiarize it with everybody on the corner there of, of Elkvale and uh, in the industrial park uh, of that property. Um, <clears throat> our value for 2019 is $11,757,000, 57200 $11,757,200. And uh, this is an office building um, that was um, built in 1990. Uh, it's been updated some uh, and, and so forth over the years. Uh, we have it just as an average office type structure. Uh, it's got an open office area in, on the interior and, and so forth. Um, Matt has, uh, um, in his handout there, does have the, the floor layout and, and so forth uh, showing that. Um, <clears throat> went down through here and, and, um, and looked at the... Um, the properties that we have, we have three sales uh, uh, that are, are they're fairly similar to that. Uh, the um, the subject property, uh, our, our valuation is at $88.33 per square foot. I do have a, a sale property, a sale number one. Uh, in my hand out there, you can, you'll be able to see a, a picture of it uh, in the back there, sale number one. Um, it's the, the GE building, actually not very far away from this property. Uh, should I wait just a minute? Nope. Okay. Um, the GE building, which is not very far away from this property on 900 Concourse Drive, um, sold in, in April of 2017 for $7,250,000. $7, um, it actually sold for $96.17 per square foot. Uh, and it's very similar type property as far as the usage. Uh, it's a call center also. And uh, um, it, it's being used today. And it's in good shape. And um, 
and, and everything. Um, I have another sale property. Um, uh, actually, it's downtown. It's the the old um, Black Hills Power uh, office uh, structure downtown there. Uh, it, it actually sold for for we have it at six million dollars. Uh, I believe they had a, a note in, in there that it sold for five million, but then they g gifted another million dollars to us. So we used the six million dollars basically as a, as the value. Uh, that that actually comes out to $104.29 a square foot. Uh, it's been split with the, the YMCA and the school uh, and so forth. They each have some floors there that they u utilize. And it's being re re remodeled uh, at present. Um, another pr uh, property, the third sale that I have is a... Um, let me get to it here. Um, it's a, it's a property on 2828 Plant Street. Uh, you'll see a picture of it in, in my in my handout there is, is sale number three. Um, it sold for in, in August of 2018 for three million dollars. It's it got quite a bit less footage. It's 35,282 square feet and that's including the lower level of that that building and so forth. I, I don't I don't uh, um, Think it's quite in the category of our subject property and, and the first first couple of sales there, but uh, uh, it did come out to eighty five dollars and two cents a square foot as far as the uh, sale price um, of what it sold for and, and the footage there. Again, it's an office structure, and uh, and just taking those um, figures and so forth. Uh, you know, with the with the uh, subject property being at eighty eight thirty three and and so forth, uh, I feel our value is is fair. I did go uh, down through all the information that Mr. Selling sent in uh, here a while back to me. Uh, he's got an income approach in there and everything, and uh, there were a couple little things in there that uh, that I found uh, that weren't, weren't quite uh, quite right um, but uh, he's using the nine percent cap rate also and everything he's his actual valuation is coming out not very far from from my value of 11 million um, some dollars and um, um, he, he gets to a bottom line uh, in his on his uh, income approach where he takes off, uh, it says lost, uh, less loss to stabilization. He came out with $11,206,903 in his income approach, indicated fair market value. And then he took uh, $3,398,295 off for less cost to stabilization. Now, the, one of the renters that was in the subject property here did leave, and, and I think they left pretty, pretty close to the end of the year in, in 2018. Our date of assessment is November 1, so, you know, I mean, it's they were in there all that time and so forth. Uh, they do have a, uh, they do have a lease on it yet. Uh, the lease actually started in 12-1 in of 2017, and, and it, it expires November 30th of 2019. So, we, we're, you know, and that lease is still in effect as far as I know. Even if they left, I, you know, that's, I, I don't know all the particulars about that. Uh, but um, that's what's in the information here that we have of, of, of the, about the lease. Thank they you. were paying $11 uh, per square foot uh, triple net lease on the property. Uh, Mr. Selling used $10 a square foot. You know, he felt that was a little bit over, over market on, on a short-term lease like that. I, I don't know that it was. We have other office structures that are, are, are even more than that, you know, up in the $14 and $15 per square foot category as far as lease goes and, and so forth. So um, Regional Hospital does, um, does uh, that little extension on the, on the bottom of, of that building right there uh, is, is leased by um, Regional Hospital and that's 15,000 square feet. Uh, so they are still in there. And uh, so the building isn't entirely empty. 
and so forth. But I, uh, his adjustment for um, stabilization and so forth, I, I guess I, I just can't go along with that. I, I don't feel it's justified. And uh, to go to take, uh, you know, th about three and a half million off just uh, all in one year, I, mean, I don't think a property does that. Um, in my estimation, I've never seen that. R3. Uh, um, I, I feel our value of, of the 11757200 is fair value for this year. Thank you, R3. You have a question, R3? I do. Uh, sir, for all of us, and I think I understand what stabilization means, but why don't you give us an explanation of stabilization? He wants you to give an explanation. I said I think I know what stabilization means, but I'd like you to give us an explanation of stabilization and what that means effect what effect that has on value thank you well i i, I believe what uh, what uh, mr selling is, is uh, saying on there is because the the proper uh, that area is no longer being occupied and, and rented by somebody um that there's a, a loss in value there um to the property because of uh, not uh, and the income isn't there right now. Right. Based on. And that only affects if you're if you're basing it on a on a uh, income approach, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Our three is um, Madam Chair. Let's let Matt speak if that's okay, guys, and then then us. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Um, I'm ready. Uh, I just want to make sure before I get going here. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, you sound fine, sir. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, pa I've passed out, or I've asked um, Joan and, and Richard to help me pass out a, a 35 page um, kind of information package. Um, if everyone has that in front of them, I'll, I'll just be referring to the page numbers at the bottom. Um, I'll flip through it to kind of just go over um, the information that's in there. And then at the end, I'll try and address some of the questions that um, that R3 brought up um, and kind of explain our rationale and the, the property owner's rationale. Okay, so this first page is just a summary. Um, we believe this building valuation uh, is close to $7.8 million, which is $59 per square foot. Um, the second page is an aerial of the property. Uh, I know R3 already talked about its location, uh, the kind of the industrial park there out, out near Rapid Valley. Um, the third page includes some more pictures of the of the subject property, um, including the build out on the inside. Um, Sir, I'll just what we can do is just see if anybody has any questions from the pages instead of you telling each one. I think they can look at this and figure out what's on there. Let's just see if they have any questions from your thirty five page um, printout, sir. If that's okay, Matt. Instead of you explaining, yeah, and, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of assuming. Have you guys um, gone through these pages yourself yet, or I have? Well, because I know there's a there's going to be a decision made right after the hearing. Is there going to be any time for you to review this um, without my presentation? Um, we have your presentation, so that's why I was saying, Matt. If they if they have questions on your presentation, just um, go ahead and tell us why this equalization's wrong based on or what you think this equalization uh, should be this assessment Matt this is Gary Drews uh, question on uh, where you have the occupancy at 11.33 uh, is that based on current uh, the, the current use of the building without considering the lease that's ongoing Gary what what page honey this is on page five thank you sir right so um so yes, yeah, the, the building is currently 11.3% occupied. And I know Richard was talking about, oh, according to the information that they have, um, you know, the lease doesn't expire until November of 2019. Well, that's because the tenant has gone bankrupt. They're, they're not making payments to the owner. They've vacated the space. Um, Ditech Financial, so I'm going to go to page seven now. Page seven is the rent roll for this property. Um, Ditech Financial um, you know, used to occupy 88%. 
of the building, um, but then they file for bankruptcy. There's some notes there at the bottom of that page. Mm -hmm. um, so that 11% is the actual occupancy of this building. And then that's, that's really um, our argument here, and that's why we have a, a loss to lease or a loss to stabilization, whatever you want to call it, um, a, a, a investor. And th this is an investment property. This isn't an owner-occupied property. An investor would not pay the same for a property that is cash flowing compared to a property that is negative cash flowing. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, they're, they're going to have a lot of costs to try and lease this up, including a lot of marketing costs, a lot of leasing commissions, um, in addition to the rent that they're already losing. So that calculation for the loss to lease, uh, let's see what page, that's on page six. Uh, Matt, Matt, this is Deb. Cost to lease up. So they just left in November of 19, so your loss of stabilization is just Five beginning months. of this year. Months. Five months. Quite a bit. Well, right, and the, the property, so let's... Because um, it says they're, they're leasing for, uh, till 11 30, 2019. Do they still have to pay right. for the property till 19? October of 2018 is when the property was leased. So they had vacated by October of 18. Um, quite frankly, I don't know if they made their payments in um, September. I, I don't know if they, I'm assuming they didn't make their payments in October. Um, but, you know, the, the status of the building as of November 1st was that it was only 11% occupied. Okay, and you haven't found any tenants in the last five months? Correct. It is still, it is still listed for sale. It's listed for sale and it's listed for lease. So okay. it's listed for sale at $12 million, but that's just their asking price. Um, yeah. You know, it's been, uh, it's been uh, half a year and they haven't had any offers on the building yet. Um, and then I can go, they, they selected that $12 million asking price kind of based on um, some other sales. However, they got a pricing analysis done by 10X so I'm on page 11 of my analysis now. Thank you. Um, this isn't my opinion. This is um, a different professional's opinion called 10X, and they, they do this full appraisal of the building. And if you were to flip through this appraisal, there's, um, you know, they do, they do a good job describing the property, um, listing its facts, and then its likely trade range. At the very bottom, so this is page 12 that I'm on now. Um, the very last sentence there is, given the range in prices per square foot for the applicable comparable sale, 10X suggests a reserve price range from $50 per square foot to $60 per square foot, or $6.6 .6 to $7.9 million. Um, and, you know, we're, we're asking for the high end of that range. <laughs> um, you know, we certainly could have been a little bit more aggressive and asked for the lower range, but, um, you know, we're, we're our analysis kind of is in agreement with this 10x pricing analysis. So how come you didn't, if you agreed with that, Matt, how come you didn't lower your price to sell the building for 6 or $7 million? How come it's listed at 12 If you agree with this analysis is what I'm saying, Matt. It would be ecstatic to get the assessor's valuation of $11.89 million. It would be ecstatic to get that in an offer. Um, and quite frankly, no investor would pay that. The, so, only, the only person that might be able to pay that is an owner-user. Um, and an owner-user would, in my opinion, pay significantly less as well. So, Matt, they you... Also have to pay... So, Matt, um, hold on a sec. Matt? In their own money. Matt? And an improvement. Yes. Matt, so I guess I'm not getting this. So your guy says, or your person that you believe is... Right, it's six seven million. You've listed it for twelve. I understand we go high sometimes when we list stuff, but you're kind of you're telling me one thing and doing another. So I guess I'm not I'm not getting it. So you've you've gave us these pages that said is it should be between six and seven million. You've listed it for twelve. And you're saying you can't sell it for eleven seven five seven because of stabilization, stabilization, and other things. So why wouldn't you list it like for eight? Ma'am, it's it's just a listing price. Um, but, you know, I the owner is probably trying to get the most out of this property. I don't think 
their sale price is deterring any potential investors. Um, you know, they, no, they I, I sell there. properties, sir, because I have properties, and I list them high. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. But I don't list them for double the price of what I'm listing if I don't think I can get it. I'm going to I'm going to list it for 350 and hope I get bottom line maybe 250. So, so I've never seen anybody give me a presentation that says it should be 6 7 million and then list it for 12, sir. Again, so. ma'am, this is um you know, you've seen that pricing analysis. They're in agreement with the lower valuation. Okay. Um if the owner is asking less for this property, <laughs> if it would affect their property tax valuation, I'm sure they would ask less. Uh, but that's not really okay. the case. They're trying to they're trying to make as much bang for the buck as they can. All right. And so let me let me ask the board if they have any other questions, Matt. Madam Chair, Commissioner DeSanto. Matt, I'm going to kind of roll with the same thought process that uh, Commissioner Hadcock just spoke to you about. I. I also have a family member in the real estate business, and um, uh, if you've got somebody telling you, and you want us to base our taxes on what this company is telling you, that the valuation of the property is at most $7,900,000, and you're in any way, shape, or form motivated to move this piece of property, um, because you're suffering that loss of rent, uh, you're not going to, you are running off potential investors by having uh, a property listed at, well, uh, about 35% higher than what, than what you, uh, than what your 10X has told you that that piece of property is worth. And I, I know this is as a fact because I've watched it happen over and over and over again um, with my family member that when people come in and they list their properties way too high, especially here in South Dakota, nobody even looks at it. They don't even bother looking. Um, so I have a hard time giving you this adjustment when to me it tells me that that the owner is not really that interested in uh, in getting this property moving, yeah. um, right? And he's looking to us. He's looking to the taxpayer of of Pennington County to um, to make up the difference for him while he has his property listed way too high, according to Ten X. Anyhow. So, is there any other questions, Madam Chair, Commissioner? Um, Rosconnect. Matt, Ron Rosconnect, Commissioner Rosconnect. Are, is the property being offered right now as a lease fee interest or fee simple? It's fee simple. So they're, they're trying to get an investor to, um, to take this off their hands and then lease it up. And that investor would certainly have a lot of costs associated with the lease up. Right. Um, th there's one other issue that I haven't um, really addressed. If I have some more time, I'd like to talk about the sale of the neighboring building. 3600 Turban Drive? Correct. Um, R3 has, has brought this sale up. Um, it's on page, uh, let's see, it's on page eight of our analysis. Okay. Right, the, do, you know the, do you know the terms and conditions behind that sale? Yes, it was a fully occupied property. Uh, is that the one? I believe that sale, uh, the sale price was contingent on the... Uh, Page nine is the notes from the sale. It, it, it was fully occupied. It's 11 years newer. Um, it's smaller. Um, so there need to be adjustments for its age and its size, as well for the fact that it was a fully occupied property. If these two properties were listed in the market, surely an investor would pay more for the occupied one, that's not going to cause that's not going to cost um, million dollars in present value to lease up. And you know, I I can go into more detail about this, um, but you know, our, our issue here is that we're 11 percent occupied, and there needs to be some sort of um, adjustment for that because certainly a, a buyer is going to make an adjustment. Uh, this is my take on this. 
Number one, just the sheer size of the building is going to make it tougher the market than all the comps, and the, bi the biggest comp is roughly one half the size, so I can see a, a size, and then just the fact that only 11% of it is, that, as an investor, that would be a major concern to me. To put a value to that, I don't know you want to do a one, uh, look at one year and do an income approach like you did, and then make this major adjustment for uh, stabilization. I would suggest that you come back next year and and have this outfit that's been you've been working with and have them do a discounted cash flow analysis over a 10-year period so that we can we can look at each one of these years and uh, and bring that back to present value so that we got a better understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. And I think that would be a much more effective method of uh, showing the showing your estimated loss uh, due to the uh, size of the building and the current occupancy rate. Any other questions, board? But I won't make a so, motion. Jeff, motion. If next year, if this property were still vacant, um, you know, what would the argument be? Because the owner would have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in rent, um, <laughs> plus plus all these property taxes, plus everything else. You know, it, we would just be coming in with the exact same approach. Okay. Well, if we if we took your value, if we took that, I don't really. Uh, a lot of that information is very subjective, and it's hard to put a lot of weight on it, whereas, the, as I said, that discounted cash flow analysis would spread this out over 10 years, bring it back to present value by a market-extracted uh, discount rate. I could, it'd be easier for me to swallow. But uh, what I'd be willing to recommend would be that we keep the 2019 assessed value the same as 2018 until you can put the, together a better case. I agree. Got a, motion. got a motion and a second to keep it at ten million two fourteen one. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Matt, next one, Northwest Bank. Okay, that's actually um, handled by different different representative here. Okay. Um, and I know Joan Joan has that new phone number. We're gonna, um, we're gonna take five then, if that's okay, and then we'll come back. Is that okay with you, Matt? Okay. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Move to uh, take five minutes break. Yep. Second by LaCroix. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Everybody ready to come back? <laughs> Recess? Okay. Next one's Norwest Bank, and Joan is uh, trying to get uh, somebody on the phone. Joan in there? Yeah. Can't even see her. Okay. Thank you very much. What's your name, sir? Hello? Uh, this is Christian Segner with Ryan. Okay, Christian, we're going to let um, Trent go first. Uh, I've got a handout that I'm going to hand out and to you guys. And then we'll have you speak after that, if that's okay, Christian. And, Sounds um, good. Thank you, sir. Why is that not going there? So well. And we are on Norwest Bank. Yep. Okay, so this is information that's come from Norway. Right. Yep. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. I'm all set. So the information I gave you also includes the stuff that you got from Norwest Bank, their valuation analysis, and it's an analysis. It is not an appraisal. Okay. So just think that's worth noting. Um, to start off, I, I make a recommendation to keep the value at $8,973,600. Um, that's what we recommended at local boards. The reason being I feel that that's appropriate is based at looking at the market information. Uh, if we were to look at what Norwest has provided, they did uh, an income approach based off of square footage and what you could uh, lease it at. And, and they got $9.50 based off of their market research, which I would disagree with. I don't think any of the properties that they're using are really um, comparable. Right. Let, uh, let, let me stop you for a minute. So the handout you gave us said 9 million 22. Okay, so 5141. That's one. what it assessed at. Then this is our recommendation. Just so 8 million 973 All right. Um, did you hear that, Kristen? Uh, yes, I'm aware that um, the value came down just a little bit um, in the informal hearing. 
Okay, thank you. All right, Trent. Uh, back to the, the income approach uh, using Mr. Sanger's information. Um, I, I did look through it. I disagreed with a lot of the comparables that he's using. Uh, I don't think that they're like kind building um, occupation uh, location as far as what is there on the market for leasing or being sold. Um, looking up just a few listings, you know, three of them that I think would be really good. They're close in the general vicinity. I would range from $15 to $18. That would be the third page if you look at it in yours um, where it says listing. And the, the lowest one is Mandalay Plaza, and that is south on 5th Street. Um, I, I would think that that's a little bit less of a, a location but if you look at Founders Park which is fairly close um, West Boulevard which is really close those are being rented at $17 a square foot or being uh, advertised as that if we were to use the low end of that at $15 and use Mr. Sanger's information as far as what he had done for an income approach we would come up with a value of eight million or eight hundred and eighty nine thousand and forty dollars which is, I think I wrote that down wrong, which is really close to what we are assessing it at. Um, yeah, I got a digit off there. Um, whereas, whoops, just a second here, I'm sorry. Um, I missed a zero in there. It should be eight million. Or no, I'm sorry, that's correct. He would be saying that um, his value would be 559 for the leasable. Yeah. And our, ours would be 889 for, for the leasable um, space. And again, I'd refer back to just the listings at $15 a square foot would be the low end to look at, not $9.50. Um, the thing I would like to look at would be sales that would be in the area. The best sale that I think we would look at would be the Black Hills Federal Credit Union, which recently sold. Um, we have it assessed at three million three hundred twenty-nine. It sold for four million dollars. This has been since the assessment date, so. But it is a very recent sale that I think is worth looking at. And if you look at that, it's a hundred or one hundred sixty-four dollars seventy-one cents is what it sold at per square foot. We have the subject assessed at 159. That's a bank to bank looking at that. Um, we could look at the YMCA across the street. <laughs> that one, it's a recent sale. It's close. The, the building is quite a bit older. The condition was quite a bit more worn out as you all probably are aware of. They've been doing extensive work there, but that sold for $104 really worn out, a lot older. Um, if we were to go over to the Turnack Tower and look at a sale there, it was the 10th floor. It sold for $245 a square foot. You know, that's quite a bit higher. Um, the next best one that I would compare to would be First Western's third floor recently sold. And that is in a bank, it's office space, that would have sold for uh, $148.50 a square foot. If you were to look at the two banks that have sold, we're in the middle of both of those. Um, and then the last thing I would point out is looking at the assessments, which typically we want to compare sales, not assessments. You know, we want to look at what we're assessing it at versus it's selling. But if we were to look at the assessments of all the banks, this bank is assessed at the fourth lowest throughout town. The one that's the next lowest below it is Black Hills Federal Credit Union, which just sold for more than what we have it assessed at. Uh, what was the sale price per square foot? Black Hills Federal Credit Union. Black Hills Federal. It was $164.71 a square foot. Trent, Trent, are you done? Yeah. And then we're, and what do we have the assessed value of the Norwest facility at? Norwest per square foot is $159.84. Actually, Trent, it must be a little bit lower than that with the adjustment that you had. 
Ah, uh, yeah. I'm just that's based. That's divided out by the nine million twenty-two thousand. Um, let me take a look at that. Is that okay if we have Christian speaking? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Christian. Christian. Okay. Um, so we have your handout. So just um, kind of tell us why you, you think. Have my handout in front of you. Yep, and tell us why you think um, that this um, assessment is too high, too low. Um, just your argument. Gotcha. Uh, so talking about North or Norwest Bank at. 825 St. Joseph Street, Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, the income approach that I use used 950 um, as my rental rate, and you can turn to pages five through eight for my uh, rental rate comparables. Um, and I just used an average of a five mile radius um, from the subject site. Um, as far as responding to the $15 uh, per square foot that Trent was using, um, it, it looks to me like he was cherry picking those um, rental rates. And I think 950 is a more appropriate rental rate because it encompasses the whole market. Um, moving on to sales, um, I used $130 per square foot in sales. Um, and the sales that I used came from Pennington County as a whole. Uh, and that analysis is on pages 9 through 11 of my packet, and I believe this is an appropriate number because it encompasses the whole market as well. And the cap rate that I used is 8.5, and that analysis is on 12 through 14. And once again, uh, that's, that's a cap rate that we've been using for the Midwest as a whole. Um, and coming to the end of my analysis, uh, our requested value is still going to be six million six hundred and sixty thousand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Board, do we have any questions? Ross, connect, please, Commissioner. Uh, Christian, Commissioner Ross, connect, Chair. I uh, got a few questions. Okay. So this income approach that you did was specific to the Norwest, Norwest facility in Rapid City? Uh, sorry, I think you broke up a little bit there. Excuse me, your, question. your income approach was specific to the Norwest Bank in Rapid City, South Dakota, correct? That is correct. Okay, on your rents, were those rents extracted from offices or banks? Those were extracted uh, from retail. Okay, so retail in Rapid City. Retail in a bank. They're not. The, you're comparing apples to oranges. Uh, were your was the cap rate that you decided was that cap rate extracted from sales of banks that were leased, or were from office buildings? Uh, we did not believe that there were enough sales of banks to support forming a cap rate based on that analysis. So. Basically, as an appraiser, I would have never done an income approach on a bank because I don't know too many banks that aren't owner-occupied. There, As you said, there just isn't enough market evidence. Therefore, that income approach to me is totally null and void. What, right now, the best market evidence I see is a sale that took place in, in the central business district of Rapid City uh, that enlarged a that involved a larger uh, banking operation, and that sold for 164. So, if we're going to try to come up the value for this property, I would, I think the market would be much more relevant than trying to do something with an income approach that we have no support for. Christian. Yes. Commissioner Mark DeSanto. Also on the comparables that you're making uh, in a 10 mile radius, you're, the, the variance in the value of those properties is very, very significant. You're obviously not familiar with our area. Um, and much, many of the comparables that you used are strip malls, like, as you said, and re retail with multiple businesses within Whereas what we're talking about is a standalone building, um, which also makes a, a significant difference in the amount that you can rent per, per, uh, 
square foot. So I think uh, when you're talking about uh, um, Trent's comparables, Trent's comparables are apples to apples. They're standalone buildings. They're um, in the same business category as banking, and they're within uh, actually about eight blocks of, of uh, where the building stands that you're, you're building. So I, uh, when you talk about cherry picking, I don't think Trent was cherry picking at all in his defense, I think that he was using comparables that are actually apples to apples comparables. Thank you. Thank you. I, <clears throat> Commissioner so, LaCroix. So Trent, uh, you're, you're putting the assessed value at 9022500 No, we or were- Or is it um, the 8,973630? Yep, and, and to answer back to Drew's, Mr. Drew's question, the subject at 15984 is based off of the 8,900,000. Seventy three six hundred. If you take the six hundred, yes, the eight million divided by the fifty for the square footage, the fifty six four hundred and forty seven square feet. So, Commissioner Lecrae, do you have a follow -up? My motion? Okay, I'd second that. Any other discussion? So, we're taking the total at eight million nine hundred seventy three thousand six hundred because we would have to round it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Did you get that, Mr. Christian? Uh, no, I did not. So we made a motion and a second, and we're all in favor of keeping it at 8,973,600, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. You have a good day, sir. You too. Bye. Good job, Trent. Okay, the next one on the schedule is, is it Klukas? Uh, Trevor had called him, and he's, ex he's planning to be here at 11. Maybe we deal with uh, uh, Moore and Kerstead where they're not coming, and we got a recommendation on those. We'll get those out of the way. Sounds good. So that be at the bottom of your 1110 to 12 a.m., Nikki and Terrence Moore, right, and Brennan and Lori Kerstead. 12 a.m., really? 12 p.m. Huh. Your schedule says 12 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. <laughs> we're, we're hoping Deb is not going to drag it out that long today. 12 p.m. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Close enough for government work. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Oh. Okay, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Don Puckett Equalization. This is parcel ID number 3709, taxpayer more. The wall board, uh, this went to the wall board and they reduced it and I am recommending that we uphold the uh, adjusted value by the wall board. So land value 20,100, structure value 197,900 for a total of 218,000. The motion? A quick question. I, I understand you, Don, to say that that's what you're recommending now? Yes, so, I'm recommending okay. we uphold their value. Okay. I'd make that as a motion. Motion by Drews. Second. Second by LaCroix. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Rod, you're next. Maybe a quick expl explanation, Commissioner Drews. Uh, we review all of the, the actions the local board take, and the ones we think are inappropriate, we we bring to the county board, uh, but sometimes when we do that, then we get out and we meet with the property and look at the property and, yeah, okay. okay. Um, but we've already created a formal appeal. So. Okay. okay. Rod, you don't have any maps today? No maps today. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome yesterday. All uh, right, Rod. So uh, this is regarding uh, tax ID 51499, and the property owner is Brennan and Lori Kirstad. Uh, the wall board uh, made a change. Uh, we do have to do uh, rounding here, uh, but but uh, my recommendation is to go with the wall uh, change with the uh, with the rounding included. So my recommendation is three hundred and eighty thousand six hundred. So that's thirty nine five hundred on the land, three hundred and forty one thousand one hundred on the structure. A motion. So move. Moved by Drews, second by DeSanto. All in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we're waiting for uh, Klukas William. at 11. Klukas, yeah. Uh, Trevor had called him just a little bit ago. He was planning on coming. He, uh, he mentioned 11 o'clock, so. We'll take a break till 11. Yeah, I'm going to motion. Motion by Drews. We did them, right? Second by Roskinick. <laughs> Second. All in favor First say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Okay. All right, Trevor. Till, I'll and wait then, till we're all up here. <laughs> then we have the w William and Jacqueline Klukas. Okay, we'll have Trevor speak first, and then you guys speak after him, and then we'll okay. ask you questions. Thank you. All right, my name is Trevor Abernathy with the Equalization Office. Uh, the property we're discussing here is owned by uh, William Klukas, and the tax ID is 38011. Uh, this is located off of West Highway 44, right at the beginning as you're going up the hill. Uh, there's Blake Road uh, that goes off to the right there, and, and they're up in that subdivision. Um, this residence was built in 1976, and there is 1,344 square feet of living with no basement. There are two bedrooms and two full bathrooms. There was a large garage addition added in 2018. Uh, this was 886 square feet added to the existing 448 square foot garage. And both garages are finished with insulation and sheetrock. Uh, the older 448 square foot portion has a door between the new and the old garage and it is being used as a rec room. It has a dry bar and a pool table in it. No, no plumbing, uh, no heat, but uh, so I'm counting that as essentially workshop area finished garage. Uh, the home has been updated on the interior with paint, flooring, uh, updated kitchen counters, and updated bathrooms. Windows are uh, not original, but not brand new either. Uh, the siding is older and in good condition. Uh, if you want to show the photo of the shed as well, this is another reason for a change in the property value. Um, when I was out there um, doing a uh, building permit inspection on this when they built the new garage. I also picked up this shed that was in the back as well. Uh, it's a 12 by 12 tool shed. There is another shed next to it, but it is uh, small and, and personal property in our opinion. Last year's assessment on uh, this property uh, was 179,600. So we are looking at a, a large increase uh, because now we are at uh, 251,800. Um, and I'm actually recommending to change that to 251,000. That's a total of 65,000 on, on the land and 186 on the improvements. So again, that's uh, 65 on the land, 186 on the improvements. Uh, the reason it increased so much this year was uh, due to the inspection for the building permit. They took out a building permit to build this new addition to the house uh, in, in the garage. Uh, and again, that was 886 square feet that was added onto the garage. Uh, they built out from the existing garage and tied into the roof line. Uh, when, they, when they tied into that roof line, they also replaced the roof cover on the home. Uh, when I was out there inspecting the property and, and remeasuring everything, I also found that our original measurements were incorrect on the home. Uh, so I discovered that we were 192 square feet short on the square footage of this home. I added that in um, with the work that was done with that building permit. Uh, also found uh, a 269 square foot concrete slab in the front of the house uh, that, that we did not have as well. Um, when inspecting the interior of the property for the appeal, I found that we were calling a fireplace um, what what was in there we were saying was a direct vent fireplace insert but it was actually a, a freestanding gas stove which we consider personal property and in this neighborhood uh, with with the market information that we have we attribute a value of eight hundred dollars for that fireplace i removed that so that's the reason i'm recommending to change eight hundred dollars um, it's not much but it, it corrects the information so um, so with the comparables if you want to go to that and uh, comp number one is actually right next door to the subject property. If you're looking at the rapid map side, um, it's it's right here where the mouse is hovering over. That's comp number one. Uh, that sold uh, just in July of 2018 for $342,500. Uh, this house is built in the same year, 1976, uh, is a little bit smaller above grade at 1,104 square feet and has a small basement of 560 square feet. Um, please note that this one does have a little bit more updating on the interior and, and we did make an adjustment for that. Uh, it also has a, a garage, an attached garage that's about 1,000 square feet smaller but there is a detached shop building there 
uh, the, the issue being there as far as uh, the shop building goes. It's an older shop building that's lesser quality, so we really only have about twelve thousand uh, dollars attributed to that. Um, but uh, that is on that lot. Um, the other two uh, very good uh, comparables here, comp four and five. Uh, comp four is same year build. Uh, it's a little bit farther out, West Highway 44, and it is smaller at 864 square feet. It does not have a basement, has a detached garage, um, and that sold for 196000 in 2018. Um, and then uh, 7245 West Highway 44 is comp number five there. That one is a little bit larger at 1900 square feet 1934 it has a detached garage that's very similar in size to the subject's attached garage uh, and that sold in 2016 for 243,000 uh, adjust that for time and the differences and, and it indicates a value of 258,178 uh, with the market evidence that that I have here I, I see that that supports the value that we have of the um, 65,000 on the land and 186 on the improvements and I would recommend to uh, keep that value of 251000 Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Klukas? Okay. Um, first of all, I guess it was earth-shattering when all of a sudden you get a notification that your houses went up by $72,800. It's like, oh, my gosh. Um, that house originally was built in '75 as a storage shed for the house beside it. Um, we are on a shared well with two other, two other people. Um, we have a private um, septic tank. Um, house is classified as a two bedroom, although when we walk through the, one of the bed, well, the second bedroom has a Murphy bed in it and two desks, okay? Um, let's see, the first appraisal was done by Rushmore uh, appraises and it came up that was in I don't remember what year that was 2012 this one was done as well. in 2017 okay and it was 1344 square feet total gross living um, the next one was done by Dave Daughter's appraisal and it was completed 6-6 six, six of 2012 <coughs> excuse me and it was rated at 1360 square feet. Um, there, my wife is going to talk about com some comparables. Um, one of the comparables that I had come up with was a home that recently sold for 185,000, classified as a two bed, two bath, 1,390 square feet, 0.69 acres, built in 1963. So it seemed very similar to our home. Um, Trevor's comment at that time was that it was uh, probably a modular or a double wide and I guess I just want to refer back to the, the fact that our home was built as a, as a 24 by 4, 8, 48 storage shed in 1976. So his, his comment to me was that they weren't built the same, that a mobile home or that a modular isn't built the same as a house. Well, I would just say that I'm not sure how mine was built when it was initially built as a storage shed. And I have the paperwork from the county showing that that's what the building permit um, was for, was a 24 by 48 storage shed. Um, we have a dirt. And we have a, a, just a dirt crawl space that's not sealed, which um, I noticed some of these other homes that I was comparing to uh, have, they're on a different type of a foundation. <coughs> the next comparable that we showed was a listing, um, and it's a current listing. They have it listed for 167.9. It's a two bed, one bath, 1,296 square foot, 0.56 acres, built in 1978. And they have it listed right now for 167.9. These are all, of course, on the west side of Rapid City. I, I searched for things that were close to my own location. Um, I have a sold comparable of a home that sold for 238000 and it was bigger, it's newer, it has a third bedroom, it's more land, it had a heated garage, and it also had a heated cottage. So the fact that the property seemed to be bigger, newer, better, the whole nine yards, and they sold for two thirty eight, and that was um, a comparable sold within the last 12 months. Um, and my fourth comparable that I was uh, looking at was also a sold, 
property that sold for 235,000, also bigger, newer, has a third bedroom, has a four foot crawl space lined with plastic. So I guess, you know, what we're showing is that we just don't feel that our property is really worth $251,000. Um, we have all these comparables too in this final folder. And you I need did to get copies them. if anybody wanted to look at them. I would like to look at those. Okay. What year did you buy your home? We bought our home seven years ago. Okay. Do you know what the appraisal was? I have the appraisal from seven years ago. Okay. When it was appraised as a two bedroom. And how many is it now? Well, um, I call it a two bedroom. Um, initially, I think the county was trying to call it a three bedroom. There is one room that has no closet, so I don't think it's classified as a bedroom. And what you're calling my second bedroom has a built in. Murphy um, bed. But it also has a built in eight foot long granite desk. It's an office. Okay. And so technically, I don't know that you could ever even use that as a bedroom. You can't even hardly get around a bed if it's in there because of this built in furniture. We so, use it for when the grandkids come over. We pull it out of the wall. and. So what was it appraised at back then? Um, I have that right here. One ninety three, three eighty eight. Okay, and that was seven years ago. That was seven years ago. So Trent, can you tell me in seven years, um, you have explained some stuff that were different and the square footage and the different things <coughs> that you got you have seen in the last few years. Yes, um, one one thing I I did did note here, you know, last last year's assessment, I, and I brought that up just because it was a large um, increase due, due to the new place. building on it. Um, but uh, we were at 179.6 last year. Uh, they bought the property in 2012 for $186,000. Um, and they've they've done that uh, 886 square foot addition to the garage since then, uh, and and put a new roof cover on it. But also did some work to the roof as they built that garage uh, in into the the roof there. Um, one thing I would note is I I am aware that this did used to be a storage shed. Um, at one point in the 80s, uh, it, it was brought up to the uh, planning department that, hey, this is no longer a shed, it's a house. So I don't know exactly what time it was converted to that, but um, I don't think it's uh, proper to compare this to a shed. Uh, if, if you just read, uh, just this is a, from the last listing uh, that it was, it's yeah, all electric home, completely handicapped, accessible to every room and entrance. Two extensive rehabs to the home since 2007. Uh, country living two miles from Rapid City. Oak hardwood floors, open floor plan, bay windows, sliding doors, uh, granite countertops, and and so forth. So uh, to to call it a shed I, at this point is is not appropriate. And <coughs> as far as as far as the bedroom count goes, um, you know I did find recent market uh, that that I gave to you there. It has been listed as a rental, three bedroom, two bath as well. Uh, Recently, where uh, Sturgis Rally Rentals. That was in 2015, and they told me all I had to have was an enclosed area with an air mattress to call it a bedroom. So, what do we call a bedroom, Trent? How how do we classify something as a bedroom when we classify? Generally speaking, what what we are looking for is what would the market perceive it as. Right. Um, just on a general guideline, we're looking for egress, uh, ingress, separate from the rest of the home with with a door of of some sort and uh, a closet. However, in this case, it, it does have a, a Murphy bed in, in one with built-in cabinetry that works as the closet. And really all that would be needed to make it that third bedroom is, is a dresser in that other room. The door to that room is double pocket doors that slide into the wall, which are open all the time, and there's no way to shut or latch. They just slide in and out. So, Picture I mean, I don't know what your classification for both, a bedroom is. Both the, other, both the rooms have the same kind of pocket doors in them. So. All right. And so, board, do you have discussion? I Thank do. You. Am I correct that I read that um, every bedroom has a full access from the outside? My sliding office, glass doors? My office, my den, and our what we consider our master bedroom has sliding glass doors to the outside. So, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Trevor, that it's considered a bedroom if it, have, if it has windows, doesn't necessarily have to have a closet. Well, your sliding glass doors, I believe, would be considered windows. 
Um, it, so just so we're clear, we're clear on what is considered a bedroom, that defines a bedroom. It doesn't have to have a closet? It doesn't have to have a closet. We don't, we don't have them at our motel. We don't have, some don't have closets and we, they're bedrooms. So, Madam and Chair. you're separated. Hello? Uh, hello. Trevor, <laughs> how would you rate the quality of the home? Oh, I said hello. I would rate that as an average quality home. With a dirt crawl space, crawl space about 18 inches tall. Uh, it's just been my experience when you get dirt, you get mold. I mean, that's just my experience. Um, you, Trevor, you said earlier that you want to put those five cells back up. Sure. Yeah. Could Comparisons, you Deb or Ann? Thank you. I think you said four and five were good comparables. Yes, the best one that I that I have is comp one. Um, four and five, I'm looking at the year built uh, and not having a basement. Also, uh, similar size in acreage. Well, if I take four and five and I take the average, I get 175 a square foot. And, and with those being... What I'm trying to do is address what I feel is a little bit lower quality just with the crawl space and some of the other issues. And my recommendation would be to take the difference between the current assessed value of 187 and the average of sale four and five, which is 175, $7 a square foot times gross living area of 1,344 for reduction of 16,500 rounded. That, that's my motion. What would be the amount? What's, what's that make that total, Ron? Now, if somebody wants to do the math, <laughs> what's the current uh, assessed value of the building, Trevor? 251.8. That's, that's the total so for everything. 186. Uh, 186.8 eight is what it's at. I was recommending 186 even. What's the land, Trevor? 65,000. Okay. And just a note, that property next door that sold last year is 50% larger than our property. They have an acre and a half, and we only have an acre. And they have a huge pole barn. That was the selling factor next door. Was Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cooks. 186. Minus 16 is... Oh, there we go. Tell me about the construction of your home, then, since it started out as a storage building. Yes. Um, I presume it's all been furred out. Is it two by four, two by six? Two by four. We, we assume that, yes. Okay, so that was all done before you were born. Before, before we moved yeah. in. We've only been in there seven years. 170 wrong. Okay. It would be 170 and 65, okay. yes. 170 Which is, would be a total of 235. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Well, that would be my motion. 170. So 65. For the land and 170 for the structure, which would make the total 235, is the motion. And there was a second. Second. Second by DeSanto for discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. You're at 235. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Okay. Motion to recess. Am I correct? No motion, just time to recess. How about that? What time are we coming back? One o'clock? One o'clock. Okay.